to Stagecoach Road Sewing Machine. Today's machine, I'm really happy to show this one to you. These are some of my favorites. The green, mint green Kenmore's from late 60s and early 70s. They're just really superior, well-made machines. Um, you can see the machine is not in a case or cabinet. I definitely recommend that you do that. However, it will have to be a Kenmore case or cabinet as their base size is not compatible with Singer or Bernina or any of those other makers. But, uh, not a problem. You can find those things at thrift stores very inexpensively. Make sure you measure between your hinge pins and your bed. Of course, if you're like me, you'll just get out your jigsaw and make it fit. <laughs> okay, on the machine. Sears Kenmore. The 158 series. Let's turn on the light. Right there. Switch. Very cool. We're going to wind the bottom. We're set up for winding the bottom. We've got our thread on. Thread through the little bottom tension disc. Push that lever there. Let's be clutch the machine over here. And let's wind a pretty good amount of thread because I've got a lot of stuff to show you on this machine. Too fast. Sometimes I get excited. Get to the metal. Okay. There's the pop snap back up. Let's thread the top first. And we'll throw a little pigtail here. A little pigtail here. Through the tension disc. Check spring. That thread and through the take up lever. That's what that whole thing was called. A couple more thread guides. Plenty of thread guides on this machine. And the last little one before the needle. Now something you're going to need to know about this machine. Ah. To change a needle, you need a screwdriver. To change the foot. The same one will work. Speaking of feet, Kenmore machines are high bar center needle. This one is a high bar center needle. So when you go to buy different attachments, that's what you'll look for. Let's thread that needle. Needle goes in this machine with its flat side to the back, which means you thread it front to back. Got mature eyesight. It might take you a few more seconds, but there we go. And then right under the foot. Now let's thread the bottom, which we just wound. And take this plate right off. Here's where your bobbin goes. Very familiar sort of bobbin case here. But instead of inserting in the side like you may be used to, this one goes in from the front. And that. I'm going to leave some tail hanging off there. goes in, this little finger pointing up, clicks in, leave that thread dangling down like that. And put that plate back on there. Like so. Now, with these old green cameras like this, the wheel turns towards you. You raise the thread. There's the thread. Okay, now I'll place both your threads through the center groove in the foot and back like that. We are ready to sew. Now there are a lot of features on this machine, but let's just start off with a straight stitch. They've got things really nice and color coded here. The S. This is your stitch width control. See how the needle moves back and forth? So when we get to the stitches that are zigzag related, we'll be using that. But for now, put it on the red S for straight. Red here. This is a stitch selector for reverse cycle stretch stitches or plain zigzag family stitches. For now, we're keeping it red. Straight stitch, red dot. This is our stitch length. This fine Kenmore was... Um, Made in Japan. This one right there. USA, 
designed, made in Japan, and boy did they do a fine job of it. But because it was made in Japan, it's numbered as a Japanese machine, metric, zero to four. So if you're used to a Singer zero to 40, this is like, oh, what? Okay. Let's put on about two and a half. That's gonna be your average straight stitch. And down here, this is the knob. It's got lots of stuff going on. Again, your red S, just like here. Straight, straight. This will also give you a plain zigzag. You turn the width up. You can also get a multi-step zigzag, a box stitch, a blind hem there. Now you'll also see a set of stitches in black. Those are going to be your stretch stitches, and we'll explain those in a minute. For now, we're sticking with our plain straight stitches. If you're going to sew a piece of shirting, hey, look what we've got, a piece of shirt. Straight stitch, about. reverse you say it's right there now the reason you want to put this guy in a cap and we got a really nice looking accelerator pedal down here listen to that look at how slow you can go how fast this machine look at that great tension what a great stitch that is just perfect. Let's turn around here. Pivot. Let's take a. Oh, let's go to zigzag. Look at that. Okay, let's go to a very short, compact zigzag. basic straight and zigzag family of stitches. Let's check out the reverse cycle action. Reverse cycle stitch, when the feed dog moves forward and back in addition to the needle moving side to side. This gives you the ability to sew stretch fabrics, say a t-shirt. What I've got in here for a needle right now is a universal ballpoint needle, which will work for most fabrics. If you're going to sew swimwear or elastic, you would definitely want to get a ballpoint needle because that will find its way between the threads instead of trying to cut through them. If you're ever trying to sew knit and you get a lot of skip stitches, check your needle. Make sure it's a ballpoint or universal, which is what we're using right here. Now, the problem with sewing t-shirt fabric with just a plain straight stitch is that the minute you pull it over your head, your stitches are going to snap because the stitch has no stretch built into it. I'm going to flip this machine over to the black bar, which gives us the selection of reverse cycle stitches. Let's go ahead and make that long and that wide. And let's just see what that stitch looks like. This is going to go forward and back and make a stretchy stitch. Oops, I've got it on wide zigzag. I don't want that. It's one straight right See that back and forth movement? Now watch this. This stitch each actual seam has been reverse cycle sewn three times. I'll stretch this. As if I was pulling that t-shirt over my head. Okay? That's what a stretch stitch machine does. A serger is like that too. That's why a serger stitch is so cool. But you can sew swimwear, t-shirts, underwear, lingerie, bras. I mean, belly dance costumes. What do you got? Bring it up. Okay, so in addition to the fact that those stitches are stretchy and you've got, oh my gosh, this here, this is a lingerie stitch. Turn it all the way wide. I want to show you a lot of things in this machine because it's pretty cool. It's not just your basic zigzag. Okay, when you start, the stitch lever needs to be at the top. Now, some of the modern machines, they'll do that for you electronically. All well, these great old vintage machines, guess what? You've got to take responsibility. My dad, who taught me a lot about sewing, said that's the rooster head. He's got to be up and ready to crow. There we go. Now this stitch is really cool. This is a honeycomb stitch. See how it's coming out? Hang on. The 
honeycomb stitch. Now what do you do with that? It stretches like crazy. You can use it decoratively to smock things. You can sew elastic directly to a garment. All kinds of stuff with a stitch like that. You've also got a box stitch, blind hem, stretch edging, all kinds of neat stuff. Okay, well there's that. But then what about little heavy fabrics? Hey look, Dad's jeans. Let's go back to straight stitch. Let's go back to non-stretch, just regular. Which means we want to go back to the S. S, S, S. Long stitch length. Four layers of denim. This is size 14. Right? You can see that that is not going to be a problem. Probably being unfair to ask if you go through that 28 layers right there. If you really want to sew stuff like that, just you get an real sewing machine. But for regular old denim, I mean, the thing has an amazingly balanced tension. Sounds great. Let me show you one other, two other cool features. First of all, let's say you want to do some free motion embroidery. Oh, hey, look. Look at that. Stretch, stretchy stuff. Ooh. That'll work. Free motion embroidery is where you move the fabric. The machine isn't moving. So you want to drop the feet. And you want to release the pressure. Now you're moving the fabric. You can move it anywhere you want. You can move those swirly curlies. Now, if you want to make those a zigzag, oh, it's like writing calligraphy. monogram things in a very like I mean the technical possibilities are huge. You can buy those little fabric panels with teddy bears on them and just like stitch around all the eyeballs and stuff. It's a great gift. Okay, back to regular. Straight stitch, raise the feed back up, push the patch and made it down. I want to show you one other really cool thing here. Take the throat thing off. This center section lifts up. We've been sewing with the zigzag stitch. We can turn this around and have a straight stitch hole. Now, you also have to remember that if you're going to do that, these things stay on straight. No zigzagging because you will bust the needle. Wow, why would I want to do that? You want to do that if you're sewing super precise straight stitch stuff on really thin fabric, like if you're making doll clothes. A lot of people that do quilting like the absolute precision of a straight stitch, just like Grandma's old singer. So that's a straight stitch only. You would even go one step farther and place this foot with a straight stitch on the foot. Let's talk about precision quilting small, precise stitch. The thread is supported by that. I mean, it's just stitching on one layer of this fairly soft Oxford cloth and getting no puckering in the stitch at all. When you're sewing through a zigzag hole, the needle can stuff the fabric down through that big hole. When you're sewing with a straight stitch plate, it's very well supported and keeps your stitch very tight looking. So. If your project requires that just a little extra bit of precision or some very fine fabrics, the straight stitch plate is a great option. However, don't forget to take it off and move it back to zigzag when you want to do zigzagging or reverse cycle stretch or any of the other cool features of this great sewing machine. I've been real impressed with this machine as I've been demonstrating it because it's just got this great solid feel to the foot control. The speed control, the foot control here is, is very, very nice on your foot. Solid state foot control, not an old rheostat like the old machine. So that's why you can sew very precisely at low speeds. I think this machine would be super excellent for someone who's making bears and dolls and little precise things. Of course, if you're going to sew heavy stuff, it does that really well too.
that you've got a lot of great variety of stitches with a lot of use here on this great Japanese Kenmore from the early 60s. It could be yours. Thank you for watching here at Stagecoach Road Sewing Machine.